The invention of Newcomb took over 19 years. Trial and error, discovery, neuroscience, research. 14 years after the 19 years of invention, we've done with innovation, clinical proof, studies, independent, peer-reviewed journals. Newcomb is, I wouldn't say mysterious, and I wouldn't say magical, though people have said that. It seems mysterious, it seems magical. It uses very advanced physics, mathematics, algorithms, science. And it uses this in a bed of software that lies underneath music. So the user hears music. You don't hear what we're doing. But this has an opportunity to present the brain with a signal that your brain happily follows. To do this, if you want to figure out a way to manage the most complex organ in the history of this earth, the human brain, you'd better bring a tank to a knife fight. So it took the quantum physicist, naturopath, neuroscientist, the esteemed Dr. Blake Holloway, 19 years to figure this out. And for the past 14, we've refined it. We all feel stress. And then when we are in a high stress state, it's almost impossible for us to downregulate our stress. So the genesis and the impetus behind the invention of Newcomb was all derived by taking the traumatized brain, which is typically comorbid with addiction, and bringing that brain to a place of healing. Newcomb had nothing to do with the commercialization of a product. It had everything to do with the solution of a physiological problem. So if you think about humans and how we live and how we operate, over the course of time and history, we've never really been able to downregulate and upregulate our brainwave. We have always relied on external stimulation. If we want to increase our brainwave function, we drink caffeine, espresso, Red Bull, five hour energy. If we want to decrease our brainwave function, we drink alcohol, sedative. If we don't want to feel depressed, we take an antidepressant. If we don't want to feel anxious, we take an anti-anxiety. If we have sleep issues, we take a sleeping pill. Since the dawn of humankind, we have relied on external stimulation to upregulate and downregulate our brainwave. New Calm is the answer to literally choosing, using a mobile app and headphone, how do I want to feel right now? And how do I want to do this without any drug side effect or negative consequence? Neuroacoustic software was derived by our company. We created that whole terminology. We did it because when you're pioneering something so profound, there is no point of reference. That's one of the challenges of being a pioneer. So neuroacoustic software describes the complexity of what we do because we're not using a singular channel. So for example, consumers can go to YouTube and find what's called binaural beat. Binaural beat is a delivery mechanism of a frequency to the brain. It was actually discovered by a German scientist in 1839. Newcalm in our software uses an amalgamation of a lot of different complex science. We use what's called a pitch and frequency mathematical matrix. We have isochronic waveform, we have binaural signal processing, and we have a nonlinear oscillating algorithm. What does all this mean? It means that the brain has a tremendous ability to find patterns, and then once it finds a pattern, find shortcuts. So when you buy something online that's binaural beat or YouTube, you'll find that the first couple times you listen to it has a very profound effect. And then you reach diminished returns and it doesn't work because the brain has figured out that pattern. So along the 19 year invention path, we had to figure out how do we expect the brain to compensate for what we're doing to it? And then how many layers of compensation do we need to work through? That's what took so long. So the neuroacoustic software terminology talks about a lot of different complex science inside a software and the software for a point of reference. The typical song, if you download from Apple, would be five, six, seven, eight, maybe even 10 megabytes. One Newcomb journey, for example, Rescue 50, is 1.49 gigabytes. This isn't music. Music cannot change the state of a human being. It can elevate your mood, but it cannot change your mental state. So if you're in a state of high panic or worry or confused or insecure, isolated, whatever it is, and you're oscillating at a fast frequency, listening to music cannot take you to a relaxed state. That's a physiological impossibility. This isn't about the music. The music is a distraction and an ability for you to enjoy the experience. We are presenting your brain with signals in a safe and efficacious manner and using music as a carrier.